It's always so cold. What's up everybody? Thanks so much for joining me on this week's video. And in this week's video, I'm going to talk about Northern policing, what it's like, the pros and the cons about policing way up here in Timbuktu, nowhere in the North. Don't go anywhere. It's coming right now. Shall we begin? Hey, thanks for sticking around. If you're new to this channel, I'm Steve. I've been a cop for about five years. It took me five years to get in, and I have been burdened with uh, giving out a message and, and information and passion to anyone in the first responder realm, whether it's aspiring to retiring. And uh, so this channel is dedicated to giving all these tips, tricks, and strategies to help you along the way in your getting to your career, and then of course, walking through your career with you. So I'm gonna break this video down into kind of two main categories. That's simply pros and cons. Pros and cons about policing in the North and why you might want to think about putting that on your wish list. So pro number one is opportunity. The opportunities that you can get in the North are like none other. Now we can say this about a lot of different areas. Well, the opportunities you can get here is, is different and unique to that place and there. I get it. But in the North, there's a generalization of the opportunities that you get when it comes to the variety of file work that creates a better, well-rounded officer. I mean, the opportunities to go from uh, very rural settings into little communities, tight-knit communities. And uh, basically there's challenges too that come along with that, right? I've always said, you know, where there are people, there are problems and that's just the truth of it. So policing in the north you have these vast array of opportunities to be a well-rounded officer because sometimes it's just you. Maybe you want a partner and you've got to do the investigation based on what is available to you and so sometimes you're gonna to have to lean on not so much other people but you're gonna lean on your training and you're gonna develop yourself with a vast array of courses and, and experiences and training that, that, that you can get offered through the RCMP that will help you be a better well-rounded first responder because sometimes is all you got. So the second pro, paycheck. See, when you're posted in the north, there are a couple of things that can come into play. Now, this all depends on where you are and what post you're in, what division you're in. So this is not a specific, but more of a generalization, all right? So there is an isolation pay. You get an added bonus of being in a, in a situation or in a, in a place where you are isolated. There's also a northern, a possible northern allowance. Again, just because you're isolated doesn't necessarily mean you're in the north. And just because you're in the north doesn't necessarily mean that you're isolated. But sometimes in some detachments, they are two in one. So you can benefit on the pay scale also. Um, there's also things like on call and overtime. Policing in the North is often busier than pretty much anywhere else. So with that, there is uh, opportunities to, to work over time. And again, this is all dependent on, on you. It depends on your detachment and your commanders and, uh, and your team behind you. So um, although there can be a great monetary benefit to your paycheck, um, it, it's a generalization, but that is definitely falls under the pro and that's your paycheck. Third pro, priorities. Yeah, so when you're posted in the north, there is a duration set by the RCMP. And the duration can go from two, three, four years, or, or maybe even more. But generally, two to four years is what you're going to be looking at. And when you do that post and you complete and you fulfill that requirement, there's a little checkbox that is checked on your behalf. And because you've done your time in the north, you've been in a place where generally it's a lot busier, uh, you are given priority to where you want to go next. Now, this is a huge statement to make because I do not want to paint anyone into any kind of corners to think, well, Steve said, listen, kids, it's not about what Steve says, it's about what staffing says. But there is a truth to say, when you've policed in remote situations and in places like that, you can be given a, a benefit of a priority as to where you want to go next. It's almost like you sort of done your time, not prison. Don't go to jail, kids. It's not about that. It's about, okay, we understand that you've been posted in this sort of situation and uh, we want to look more favorably upon you to see where you want to go next. 
So listen, this isn't a black and white thing because I have heard myself horror stories, but I've also heard triumphant stories. So it all depends on you, where you want to go, your career aspirations, and the timing. Timing is a huge deal. But that's it. So it's the opportunity, it's the paycheck, and it's the priority. That's OPP. You know me. Okay, if you haven't done so, I'm going to take a second right now to say this. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, please do. Click smash buttons and smash your computer and smash things um, because you don't want to miss anything that we are posting. Try to put out a, a weekly video that helps encourage you, helps kind of add some tools to your arsenal so that you can be the best responder that you can possibly be. And hey, I'll just go out on a limb and say to be the best person that you can be. Okay. Cons. We don't want to talk about cons. We don't want to talk about, you know, the people in prison and now they're an ex-con, but that's just the reality of it. Police in the North does definitely have its cons. So I'm going to break this down like I did with the pros in three different ways. First, you are isolated. You can be isolated from any kind of major city. You can be hours. Shoot, you can be plane rides away from anywhere where you can buy, you know, kind of go into a store and buy things like you would in a big box store. Like, you know, you can get your tires and your groceries and your glue and then your, what, glue? And so, you know, you could be hours away from that. So there is definitely a con of being isolated. So if you are a city person, it's going to be a tough go for you in the beginning. I was a city guy. And it took me a while to get, and I wasn't even really isolated in my first post, but it still took me a while. Things seemed to close up around 6, 6.30 in the night. And if you wanted a loaf of bread at 8 o'clock at night, honey, you got to wait till the morning to get your loaf of bread. So you just have to plan accordingly. But what happened inside of me was that I began to morph into this kind of country boy. I was a city boy and then I got into this small rural town in the middle of Saskatchewan and it starts to morph me and change me and evolve me into, into more of a slower paced kind of person when it comes to my personal life and the way I live it. But with that, you get to appreciate things like nature, you appreciate things like uh, the quietness, you know, the, the hustle and bustle, I, maybe I'm just too old, I don't know, the hustle and bustle of a, of a big city just kind of rubs me like a cheese grater rubbing chalk. It's just not pretty, you know? So it, it does kind of create this uh, atmosphere or this situation for you to really learn to appreciate. And sometimes we've got to quiet the noise. I think that's a good life lesson, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, sometimes we need to learn to quiet the noise. And in this, in this season, in this situation, that's becoming very evident. And sometimes it's the, it's the things that are going on and it's the speed of everything that, ha that has happened. And now we're almost being forced to kind of quiet down but being posted in an isolated post even though it falls under the con because you are isolated from a major center I think that there is a benefit again it's good talking about silver linings right and so if you can find that benefit and you can learn to slow the pace down and adapt to your situation you're gonna do a lot better second con family you see where you are posted in an isolation place where very far north maybe you're very far from you know my closest airport is about five hours away um, family generally aren't going to visit you too much because there's nothing really else to do and you're working a lot. So if you have family kind of on the east or west coast or, uh, you know, so far, like a plane ride away from you, um, you may not see them. And, and that's true for me. I mean, I need to go and, and spend some time with my family as I can on vacations and whatnot. And it's just, it makes more sense for me to go there because they're not, you know, posted in an isolation place where there's nothing around, nothing to do. Uh, so that's why it just makes more sense. But uh, also starting a family, you know, uh, it's not a great place to start a family because uh, you know we, we do have a clinic here uh, and it's, it's a great clinic but it's not a major hospital you know they don't deliver babies here unless it's an emergency so uh, although they are well equipped and they have a great great set of staff there um, it's just something to think about you know if you're going to start a family and with a young baby you need this that and the other thing you could be far from you know a, a major hospital and uh, for me as a family guy that's super important so family may not come to visit you and also starting a family is going to be challenging in an isolated post Number three on our list is activities. Why is this under cons, Steve? That's a great question. I'm glad you asked. It's under cons because there's not a lot of them around. If you are not into hunting and fishing and maybe ice hockey, you know, it's, it's going to be a tough go because there's not a lot more to do. In fact, where I am right now, there's not even a cafe that I can go and sit and have a cup of java. So I make my own. Java. 
However, if you are into those things, then it's a great place. It's a great place to go because as a police officer, we are expected to be a part of the community. Shoot, as a person, as a person who's giving to society, it should be expected that we give back to the society. We give back to our community because we're a part of it. It's not about us and them anymore, man. We got to get over that nonsense. It's about being a part of the community. And I'll tell you right now, some communities are more challenging than others to, to do that. I get it. All right. I do. I get it. However, it's, it's important for us to realize that the activity that are around get involved with them so even if it's only one or two learn if you're hey i'm not a hunter well try it out hey i don't go fishing try it out i don't know what to tell you but there are some activities it's just that are very limited which is why i've put it under the cons there's just limited activity and because of limited activity you start doing things like youtube videos and it just it just drives you crazy and there's nothing wrong with that kids bonus bonus pro yeah, it's at you right now. Bonus Pro is family. Now I talked about family as in your family may not want to visit you way up in Timbuk nowhere. And that's true, And that, but that's cool, whatever, right? Thank goodness for Skype and Zoom and whatever else that's out there that you can do some FaceTiming with. It's a lot different nowadays, right, than it used to be. Uh, but family that you create inside of your thin blue line family, if you will. You know, your partners, your, your, not just your partners as in if you're a police officer, all the other coppers around you, or if you're a EMS, you know, ambulance and, and those parts, but it's togetherness. It's the first responder partnerships that you build and you build a sense of family, a, a sense of community, a common unity, because sometimes, you, you know, you are, you're leaning on each other because you get each other. And if you are friends or you are a copper or a first responder, you know what I'm saying? We have this weird twisted sense of humor and without having kind of commonalities with other people, um, you know, it, it, they just sometimes don't get you. They just don't get you. But that being said, it's also important equally, I think, to have friends outside of your first responder family. So as much as it is a pro and you do develop really close-knit family-like uh, you know, relationships in your life, which are great, but there's also a sense where you need to keep that in balance. You need to understand that not everyone is a first responder and that's okay. And sometimes you gotta take that first responder hat off. Just be a person. Just, that's it. Can we be people? Now that being said, with a tight-knit group, you have to also keep in mind uh, that if you don't get along with someone, and sometimes personalities just clash, and if you don't get along with someone, that can be a long two years. So my encouragement to you in that is to do your best to keep the waters at peace. Let peace be your guide, because we don't all click with each other. Sometimes we clash, and uh, it's just a part of life. So you gotta do what's best. You gotta try to keep the main thing the main thing, right? Keep the cause in front of your, in front of your eyes. Keep perspective on where you are. And, uh, and the other thing is that there is a high turnaround rate, because if it's only a two year duration post, you know what, every two years people are going. So when you start staggering that, these people are coming and going all the time. So yeah, close knit family, absolutely. But just be cautious because if you don't get along, it's a long two years. Do what you can to keep the peace. So friends, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it's given you something to think about. I hope that maybe in the back of your mind, if you're thinking, do I want to go up to the north? This video might help you consider some things that maybe you didn't consider before. And as always, comment in, this, in the section below where you can if you have any questions. And you know what? Maybe your question is on the minds of several others. So never be afraid to ask that because by you putting your question there, yeah, it's a good question. I never thought of that. Or I was thinking about that, but I didn't want to put it. So put them down, down there, put them down. And like we always say here on Real Cops Real Life, always, always be aware of your surroundings. Bye for now.